A lot of millionaires. He made a lot of people famous. He made a lot of people rich. But there's not a lot of Russell Simmons. There's just like there's not a lot of people. You know, like you know, some of the descendants from Oklahoma, if they were in the music business or the film business or just in corporate America, period, it would be different for us as a people. You had a row full of upper class black people above middle class or right. even upper middle class right. black people right. sitting there judging hip hop culture. Right. So, you know, and my pastor teaches me that whatever you don't understand you're gonna criticize. Yeah. Whatever you don't understand, you're yeah. gonna you're gonna you're gonna pass judgment on it. Yeah. No turning back now. This is what makes me this is what I am. <laughs> So independent people who run galleries or whatever need to be aware. And so somebody even even people are doing something I'm not like I'm not aware of specific specific incidents. And I don't know how much we need to know about the past, but we do know. I know we all need to know about the past. But I think what's even more important is understanding what our social responsibilities are right now to each other. If we just look at where we're at and look at the disparities that are going on between poor and rich in the United States, and people who are made to understand how people are, are, are purposely left out of the system, I think a lot more people will come to the plate than those that have something and try to try to bridge that gap. By you know definition, best I can, you know it's 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 an integrated system of, of, of beliefs, traditions, ideas, customs, products, even that constitute the life of a community, and that's a hip-hop hip -hop, hip -hop community. And so economically empowered that 60% of hip-hop music is purchased by a white community. They have a presence around the world. It's because of hip-hop that you have young Japanese going to uh, hairdressers to get their hair braided. It's because of hip-hop influence. It is amazing. Will they come to the place where they understand the power that they have to influence progress for the entire black community, I would pray that, I would hope so. You know, it is said that hip hop has come of age and that's also well and good, but has hip hop matured? Because maturity doesn't come with age. It begins with the acceptance of responsibility. Is hip hop as a community, as a culture, Willing to now, with the, the success that it has experienced, is it willing to now begin to accept responsibility for its contribution to the progress of black people? I think that, um, you know, as far as an, another black Wall Street is concerned, um, I think that most people are concerned with, as I said, you know, improving their own lives and whatever that means for whoever that is. I think that you know it, it, it is what it is, but I think um, will we have successful African Americans even more so in the next generation than now? Absolutely, and we all are, are charged with the responsibility to, to, to make sure that everybody coming behind us gets a piece of that and gets the opportunity. Not everybody's going to you know grab that opportunity. I mean, we still need people that you know aren't you know in that tax bracket they do certain things for our community that we need them to do so I mean yes I think that moving forward into the next you know generation you know my children's generation they will have a lot more than we do and therefore their responsibility will be greater but I don't believe that there'll ever be another black Wall Street I think we should open more businesses of course I think that we should um, you know improve uh, our communities and it, it, it seemed like it would be easier now because we have so many brothers and sisters that are well off where they can either donate the money and 
and let's just make it happen. You know what I'm saying? And 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 I'm seeing now that we get money and <coughs> excuse me, we go to Africa and help them. Not saying they don't need help, but we need some help right here. You know what I'm saying? So we need to have more more uh, people and more areas like uh, Black Wall Street. And I think we can we can get it we can get it back like that if we can come together mentally. We come together mentally, and because a lot of a lot of brothers and sisters now they tend not to want to put money up with each other because they want to know well, what your what's your percentage going to be and how much you going to get back. Well, if I put up a hundred, I want to get two hundred, you know. And it's like a lot of petty stuff, but that resorts back to the, the crabs and the barrel theory. You know what I'm saying? We gotta we gotta come off of that. Cause we're now we're now we're being brainwashed at an all time high. Topic of how we can get to a point um similar to the Black Wall Street community, you would have to look at all the different entertainers and business people of African American um descent and wonder where are their thoughts on the future? Are their thoughts more so preserving their own riches? or helping everyone else get it. Um, one of the things that I'm personally connected to is helping others in any way that I can. Um, it's very hard, so I know why it's not happening. You know, because once you get into a position of so-called power, so-called fame, or so-called success, you know, you're automatic, you, you don't really get a chance to enjoy it because you're automatically pulled upon and, and you're like, oh man, I gotta, I gotta help over here, but is my money being used right? And, you know, people that have never really had anything start to question those things. They start to question, like, is my energy in the right place? You know, I'd rather just find whatever creative, you know, um, outlet that helps me deal with it than to actually deal with it. And one thing about uh, when we as African Americans establish ourselves financially, we become extremely powerful. And when we become extremely powerful, we begin to realize that we don't need to lean on welfare. We don't need your social reforms. We can actually circulate the dollars that we make within the nation because we work in the nation. We don't ask for handouts, you know, unless we are unemployed and the nation won't give us a job. But we have been proven to survive the most turbulent circumstances. And you have people who, you know, even seeing brothers out there selling water in the, in the summertime. Like, how can you ticket them? I'm sitting there waiting for police to find a way to give them some tickets for selling water to thirsty people who can't buy it on the, on the highway. You know what I mean? So, of course, it's a threat because now when I'm buying the water from them, I'm not going and buying from Manhattan. That's going to overcharge me. You know what I mean? But what's real, did they steal the water? No, they bought the water from a store. And now they're becoming um, entrepreneurs. Do they have schooling for that? They don't have the legal schooling for that. Are they a threat? Yes, because now they're making a dollar. Now our mother country is saying, you, if you make a dollar in our country, we're going to tax you. We already sold it to you. Now you don't think you're going to sell it back to somebody else and make no profit and put some money in your pocket and we can't have a little bit of that. So it becomes a dangerous situation when you want to set up yourself in a kind of independent uh, structure. Are we ever going to recreate this Black Wall Street thing? Which I think was a, which was a, a, a great ex experiment is we got to first target the youth because it's the only way it's going to happen. And, 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 and we may not, we really may not be around to see it happen, but we can plant the seeds and, and target the kids and really, set, and, and really set this up. But we have to teach the kids about themselves. We have to teach them that it's possible. Because when they go to school and they learn about, you know, the history that they learn and they learn about them, they don't understand how that pertains to, to life. Instead of crossing the street and being afraid of them, they're not trying to do nothing to you. You know, all it takes is you 
put your hand on one young person's shoulder and, and try to guide them, and, you know, and show them what you've been through and show them how not to get into the type of things that you got in that you didn't feel were positive for you.